Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another guide for Castlevania Bloodlines. This time I'm going to show you how to get through Stage 4 with John Morris on Expert Difficulty. Using this password here, you can start the level with 4 lives on Expert Difficulty. Um, this is one of the hardest levels in the game to get through because there are a lot of enemies that deal a lot of damage. So you want to try to get through screens that sounds so obvious, taking as little damage as possible, but I, I really, really do mean that. There is only one roast in the whole level, and it's in the second screen, so it's kind of useless. Uh, this first screen here, there will be skeletons in the background throwing bones at you. They have an opportunity to jump through the background into the foreground and keep throwing bones at you. There will also be uh, skeletons throwing bones out of the uh, oil cans, so be wary of them. That one right there, you specifically should jump over him. You shouldn't go up to the top, otherwise you're going to get hit by a bone. Once inside the munitions factory, these guys with the green hard hats need to die twice in a lot of circumstances. So their heads will come off and then they will respawn and you need to hit them again. So I'm going to make my way to the first roast here and then I'm going to show you a one-up opportunity. So just keep making your way over. Uh, the axe sub weapon's really good, you can get that in the first screen. Um, be careful, there's also a boomerang in the first screen that you can... Uh, I just recommend missing it, it's not even worth it. Uh, but using the axe, you can kill the, uh, the fencing hard hat guy over there. And the first roast, or the actually only roast, is behind this wall here. So there is an opportunity to get a 1-up in this stage, and it's over here. You gotta kind of jump at the last possible pixel over to this platform, and then right in this last candle, there is a 1-up. So there you go. There's another 1-up in, um, in this level, which I will also show you how to get um, in a little bit, so just that's coming up, just keep that in mind. So we're gonna make our way down. There is a, uh, a flail or a mace skeleton over here. Throw axes and aim for the middle of this conveyor belt and he will die. There you go. I think there's a boomerang in that candle up there. Go ahead and uh, keep picking up some gems. So in this screen, in 4-3, there is a 1-up. And I'm gonna do something that I really never do, but this level is just so hard and getting this 1-up is really out of the way and you're almost, it's almost not even worth it, but I'm still gonna, just gonna show you how to get it. So I'm gonna create a save state here, and I normally never do that. So we're gonna create a save state, and then like an hour and a half later, I was finally able to do this on a clean run, so hence the transition. But you wanna grapple onto these conveyor belts, and keep swinging all the way over to the right, and you can grapple onto the ceiling here, and then there's a one up behind this wall. Making your way back, do the same thing, grapple onto the conveyor belts, and uh, just make your way all the way back. You can swing up to the conveyor belts if you have enough speed. Uh, I just recommend taking it safe, or playing it safe, and just going the long way back. It just takes a couple extra seconds. So just keep making your way over. There is a, uh, a mace or a flail skeleton over here. So throw some axes, take care of him, and then move into 4-4. I'm gonna pick up the flame whip here. Uh, if that's your 30th candle, it'll, it'll be a flame whip. So just, uh, on expert difficulty, I think on expert difficulty, there are bats. I'm not sure if that appears on normal or easy. There are bats in this room. There is an opportunity to stand on, to, on that piston. Uh, if you don't and you try to just move up, you can get squished by the second one. So just stand on that piss until you have a lot of room. And now we are in 4-5, which is every Castlevania player's nightmare, the clock tower. So, this clock tower is actually one of the easier ones um, in, in the series. You just gotta make your way up. Um, the trick here is you do have Medusa heads, although there's only ever one on the screen at a time, so it's not too difficult. But these uh, knight skeletons, or whatever they're called, their swords extend. So even though it looks like they don't have a lot of range, they have a big range. And they extend their swords and they can poke you from a really far distance. So you want to kill them really quickly. You, they only ever need one hit, uh, so just keep that in mind. You just want to either you know use a sub weapon or just hit them once with a whip just to, just to get them to fall. Uh, so this jump here, there is a skeleton above you, so you want to make your way over. See, he just extended his sword. Uh, so you want to make your way over and then uh, jump back and kill him. So, this room is probably the hardest one in the entire level, because there are ghost enemies that spawn. I do have the flame whip sub weapon, so I'm going to be able to take care of them pretty easily. However, I recommend uh, bringing either the boomerang or an axe in here. If you have holy water, good luck. Uh, there's not much I can help you with unless you do an item crash. Um, but yeah, so you want to take care of the ghosts as they spawn, and then stand on this last weight to bring up the, uh, to, to bring up the, the door. So now we're going to fight Frankenstein's monster. 
Uh, this boss is actually pretty easy. His first attack is always a big circular whip, so just stand to the left of the screen. Next attack will be a long whip. You can stand or crouch under it, and then he will throw uh, shockwaves onto the ground. So just jump onto the platform to avoid him, and he just does it over and over, and that's it. It's a, pr it's a pretty easy uh, sub-boss. He's just big and intimidating. So, these rotating blades, you need to align yourself in the uh, crevices, and then you can uh, walk underneath them. They get a little bit more difficult as time goes on. I do not recommend picking up that holy water. These enemies, you can just crouch and whip as they start moving. You have to kill them. Um, of course, if you have the flame whip, you can just clear the screen. So, these ones are a little bit trickier, these spinning blades. You need to walk and then crouch underneath them. If you get touched by them, they'll do like three quarters of your health. So it's very, very important, especially if you have the flame whip, to just play it extremely safe. There's no more enemies on the screen, it's just those uh, th that big set of enemies and, and then the smaller one on its own, and then it's just the, the blade, so that's it. So just make your way through safely, calmly, take all the time you need, and just make it through. So 4-9 is the last screen before the boss, or the second last screen before the boss, I should say. There's like a small room afterwards. But you have these gears and like they're like train, I don't, I don't know what you call them, you see them on trains. Um, but you also have flail enemies and now you have bats. The bats are going to be the bane of your existence on this on this uh, screen, so just take it slow. If you anticipate a bat coming, they come every four or five seconds, just turn around, wait for it, and take care of it. Don't like try to get cocky, don't try to do too much. Just pay attention to the bats more so than the flail enemies. It's, it's just going to make your life a lot easier, because the bats can knock you off these platforms and kill you. So we're going to keep making our way across these moving platforms, and then we're going to take care of the bats. It's really just bats and flail enemies on the screen, that's it. So you can see here, I took my time, waited for the next bat, and then uh, I, I made my way to the last platform. Unfortunately, I took a hit, so I lost my flame whip, but that's okay. So we're moving into the final room, 410, before the boss. You have holy water here, I actually do recommend picking that up. You can kill those cog wheels, you just gotta whip them and they'll, they'll break off, but if you just keep walking forward, you'll never need to touch them. So, the boss of stage four is uh, pretty easy, actually, but he has a really weird hitbox, because he's kind of hard to see. So there's an orb, or like a, a sphere in the middle of him. That's his vulnerability. You gotta keep aiming for that. So he goes left to right across the screen, and he can turn into this car thing, or he's swimming, I don't know what he's doing. But then he'll jump up in the air, and then he can also turn into like a little gyrocopter, and uh, fly across the screen. You see here, he starts chucking cogwheels at you, and then he'll also throw them on the floor. And I think he's gonna turn into a little gyrocopter here, go across the screen, and then we're just gonna rinse and repeat. Turns into the car, go across the screen. Holy Ward is pretty effective if you can time it, but I just like getting away from him. Okay, so the more you hit him, the more he's gonna shrink. So the, the spear shrinks with him, so you need to crouch at some point, maybe like two thirds of the way through his health bar or halfway through his health bar. You gotta crouch in order to hit him, but eventually he will expand again. So we're gonna get him to expand in a sec. I think it happens at a quarter of his health. Yep, here we go, he expands. So now he's uh, full size again, but now he can like flip across the screen into the middle and then uh, drop down. But here you see, he just like wrecked me. He, he hit me three or four times and almost killed me. So you gotta be very careful because he no longer shrinks at this point, or he shrinks very slowly if he does at all. So it's sort of the same pattern, but now he's just really big. So you just gotta be careful of him. And that's it. That's the boss. All right, that's stage four. It's one of the hardest stages in the game. I wish you the best of luck. This took me like two and a half hours to get a clean run to make the guide. So, you know, don't be afraid to use continues, saves, whatever you got to do to make it through. And that's it. All right, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for Castlevania, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new guides go live. If you like the content on this channel, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. All right, I'm Sweet Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.